The Long Haul Podcast, America's Irish Voice. Interviews with inspiring immigrants, renowned Irish personalities, and discussions on all things Irish America. Presented by Michael Dorgan and Johnny Kennedy. Five, four, Cutting the ribbon on the field of dreams. The Shannon Gales Club was formed in Queens nearly 20 years ago. Since then, members of the club have been busy developing a seven acre site here in College Point, Northern Queens. Today, they mark the opening of their first full size GA pitch, which marks the first full size GA pitch in the whole of Queens. It is also the only full-size regulation GAA pitch in the five boroughs that make up New York City, besides the Gaelic Park surface in the Bronx, meaning its opening is also a hugely significant milestone for Gaelic Games in New York. The project cost $5.2 million and has seen a new grass surface laid down over what was previously a rugged and beaten up field with some worn out baseball diamonds. New goalposts, netting, a scoreboard, as well as concrete seating were also installed. A green area behind the seating was also redeveloped with new benches, trees, lights, a new pavement and an accessible ramp leading to the pitch. Funding for the project came entirely from city public funds after Shannon Gales advocated for its development for years and helped in the long planning process. Members were able to convince the city to invest in the project after the club developed a small adjacent pitch at the park around three years ago for $2 million. The entire site is now home to around 420 Shannon Gale players from under sevens up to adult level. What started out as a dream more than 10 years ago has today become a reality. The field of dreams has happened. Dreams do come true. This did not all happen by dreaming. It took a lot of hard work by a lot of dedicated individuals. For everything that Shanagales have achieved, you should be very proud. To all the present day parents and players, coaches, and all the kids who play our Gaelic games for Shanagales, this should be a huge inspiration for everyone to thrive and continue to make Shanagales grow. Bring a friend, keep recruiting. In order to grow apples, you must plant apple trees. Apple trees will produce apples. U7 players is the future of all clubs and U7 players will produce teams in the future. Those are the words of Danny Brown, Vice Chair of Shannon Gales, who was one of the speakers at the opening ceremony. Brown is also the Chair of the New York Minor Board, which has around 2,500 boys and girls playing Gaelic games under its leadership. After the ceremony, I spoke firstly to current Shannon Gales Chair Robert McDonough and then with former Shannon Gales Chair Sean Price. Robbie, thanks very much for coming on. Explain to me, give me a quick background on what you have achieved here and first of all the, the history of the Shannon Gales Club. So the, the club formed in 2002, by, uh, it was formed by five men uh, down in Sunnyside Gardens. Um, it's a couple of kids, we had kids from, at all ages. I didn't get involved until about 2004, 2005. Um, we, play, we trained in Sunnyside Gardens for almost 10 years uh, in a small little park down in Sunnyside. Um, and then in 2009, Mayor Bloomberg came to our um, field day in Sunnyside Gardens and uh, Kieran Staunton at the time was uh, uh, accompanying uh, Mayor Bloomberg. And one of the questions Mayor Bloomberg says, what can you do for the Irish community? And says, Kieran says, the first thing you do is get them a field. And thus, through the rigs and reels, we looked at some fields and uh, we, came to, we brought the Frank Golden Park and we, we loved it the first time we've seen it and that's, that's, uh, that's how we ended up here. So that, uh, from 2009 till now, we've been here. Uh, as soon as we got the field, we signed a, a lease with uh, New York City. Um, we started thinking about development and it's basically been 10 years of development here. Um, first was Field 1, uh, which is all our own private money. Uh, and then Field 2 was funded by New York City. 
But basically, we've uh, the full run of the field. We we uh, we can use the power kind we want. We lock it up at night. Uh, we give it to other other um, local uh, communities, uh, to sports clubs and things, uh, just to share it. But uh, we've been here since 2009, and uh, this what you see here today is a combination of all that uh, hard work for by a lot, a lot of lot of uh, Shannon Gales members to, to, to around the years, you know. So pitch one is on, on my left here, and I know you've used that a lot. And what was this area for the last couple of years? What is, what, did you use it, or was it a bit? Yeah, we used we used it as a as a main field, but it was rough, uh, like it was up and down. And we, you know, when we got it first, we had to remove it baseball diamond, and we had to, um, we did some drainage to just to get it, uh, get it playable. We put up two goals at the time when we got it, and. Uh, we played it for 10 years and we were very happy to play in it. Other clubs used to come down and complain about how rough it was, but we didn't see it that way. But uh, we knew at some stage we'd have to try and do something with it, you know. And so where did the idea come come along to develop it and uh, how, um, who was involved? I noticed some uh, city council members were, or Don Richards, the borough president, was here today. I know there was some involvement with the city. Tell me how it all came together. So, um, look, it's hard work for a lot of good clubmen. Some great, we had some great chairmen uh, down through the years. Um, Tom Cairns uh, was our original chairman. And then uh, when we got this field, Richie Corden, and then after him was Collie Matters. Um, and then Sean Price, great chairman, drove it on, come up with plans, ideas that were kicked around, were changed, were, um, and and at the end of the day, it was just a lot of hard work. And uh, once 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 it was decided to get a, that we were going to do a development, um, Lee O'Neill was out from Ireland one night, and he came out here to the field, and he did a he did a video call, a video on the field here, and promoted it back home with Park Duffy. And once them two men supported it, it was we just ran with it after that. We approached our local uh, city officials, and year after year they would give half million, seven hundred fifty thousand towards Frank Golden Park, until there was enough money in the pot to do what we did with Field Two. This field cost five point two million dollars. Field One costs over two million dollars. So there's, there's over seven million dollars invested here, and it's basically for basically, you know, this is as far as I can see in the history of Queens, this is the first main GA pitch dedicated to the Gaelic Games in Queens. That I can, that I can see, definitely a modern history, you know. I think just uh, for people uh, listening back home in Ireland as well, uh, and maybe more so for back home in Ireland, that how important this is that there is actually no field in Queens, and how hard it is to have a GA pitch that you can use uh, for your own club. It's it's it's, it's a massive achievement when you uh, when you think about it that way. It's a, it's a massive achievement anywhere, but uh, look at it, back home. You expect to, you know you have your most clubs are around farmland unless you're in Dublin, but to be in the middle of Queens where there is no land. To be given seven acres of land by New York City on a, on a, on a 15 year basis with, with five year rolling lease after that, it's, it's just massive. It's, 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 hard to, it's hard to comprehend. Uh, you, know, it, like, you can't tell people at home you're in the middle of Queens, there is, there is nothing. Uh, and you, you know from a lot of clubs here in New York, there's very few clubs that have their own pitch. Uh, you know, you've got Gaelic Park by the, by, for the senior board, you've got Paddy's Field and then you've got Rockland and after that there's nothing, it's, it's, it's a scramble for anything you can get your hands on and uh, you know, the amount of people that come knocking an hour door to see can they use these facilities, is, uh, it just shows you the, 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 the pressure that's on land here in New York City. Tell me, is there any plans now? What are the immediate plans for the future? F F field 1 was only done three years ago, it, it was finished three years ago um, and that was money from the Irish government and, and Co-Park and then uh, we, we rose about 1.5 uh, million ourselves and obviously Field field 2. Our next phase is going to be putting up lights. We, we are fully approved to put up lights. The infrastructure is in place for lights. We didn't have the money now but again we just had an opening day with some great uh, local representatives here, and I'm sure they're going to help us along the way. You know, we did the Queensborough president here, Donovan Richards, and uh, some some local uh, city council members and uh, state senators, and we'll be knocking on their doors like, like we have in the past uh, to try and get lights up here. Uh, we're looking probably a million dollars to, to light up these two fields. So. Now, for in terms of the underage here and it, New York GA, the underage seems to be going in a very, a very, very good light. Uh, you won the Junior B last year. I know Barnabas, who are not another uh, All-American um, homegrown team, won the Senior County last two years in a row. So the underage here in New York seems to be strong. Yeah, I, I think it's growing. Uh, you know, even though there's not that many Irish coming out now, most of these kids are look, they're all Irish American kids. Some of the parents are Irish American, and some of the, so we've we've kids, and you've seen it up in Gaelic Park at, at junior level. We've kids that are not that even Irish that are playing on our, on our junior teams, and and some of these kids could make county teams at home. They're that good, and they're playing junior A, junior B football. 
So the, the underage system here, and I think it's it's really club by club. It's drive it, the clubs are driving it on. It's 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 passionate parents and passionate coaches, and uh, they're driving this game in New York City. And I I don't think it's going to look back. I, it's it, every year we just see it getting stronger and stronger. Tell me about your own club, Shannon Gales. Here we're in Queens, kind of nor- northern Queens, uh, College Point area. What's the club membership like? How many people are involved in underage? How many teams do you have? And going up to, to, yeah. to the junior ranks? We've we've almost 200 families. Uh, if you, we we do our membership by family membership. We've almost 200, 200 families. Over um, over 300 350 kids playing a game. We've uh, one girls adult team. We've two men's adult teams. Um, we. We've, uh, we run um, camps, clinics, one in Central Park every Sunday morning. We run one in Sunnyside Gardens. We run one in Floral Park. We run one here. So we've clinics all over the place. We want to get local kids in, non, non-Irish. We want to mix it up. We want to get as, as much diversity as possible. And that's, that's, for me, that's the future of growing the game here. Over the last 10 years, the growth really has, has been in the girls, football and camogie uh, at youth level. Uh, but now it's the, you, we got it as a club and it's up to every club but we is a club in Queens and we're the only youth club in Queens we want to drive it on this morning alone like uh, this community down here has uh, a lot of oriental uh, Koreans Chinese we've had uh, families come in this morning and say when can, when can they join and when can the kids play so you know, like uh, I think the future is very bright for, for, for Gaelic games in New York City and is it uh, what is it with the, the underage here is it um, football and is there a bit of hurling played or is it primarily football and there's a bit of camogie no, what's the mix up uh, Originally it was football, then it came in a bit of hurling, then it was the girls, and then it was camogie. But we've a, we've a very strong. We're one of only three clubs in New York at the moment playing uh, camogie and hurling, and and the, we got some great coaches. Uh, and most of our most of our camogie and hurling coaches, uh, like Tracy Smith and Mike McKenna, uh, Catherine Motherway, um, their 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 kids have uh, they either don't have kids or their kids have gone through the system. And, and they're still coaching Camogie and Hurling. That's 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 a great passion. It's just uh, it's great to see it, and that's that's what's driving this on, you know. And I suppose is the ultimate goal to get up to senior ranks in terms of the the men's division and uh, the, the the ladies to win a, win a New York County. Yeah, would that be the, crown, uh, the the icing on the cake? Yeah, look at it. It's one step at a time. <laughs> look at to be honest, I'm chairman for five years now. Uh, I'm not about winning trophies. I think development, develop, develop. The trophies will come if you do the right thing. Uh, you've seen that last year. And you've seen you've seen how we played two weeks ago in, in Gaelic Park in the Junior B final. Uh, it's just keep developing, keep, keep planting the seeds. Everything else will fall into place. Uh, you know, we just and and we, you know you'll always get coaches and uh, to, to to man the ship. It's just uh, just keep it going from the from early age on. Everyone else will take care of itself, you know. So. I'm not sure if you said it earlier, but some of the who were some of the main movers and shakers in the club here over the the last couple of years to get this done and get well, this over. Well, really, look, it starts it starts with the chairman uh, from um, Richie Corden to uh, Colly Mars to um, Sean Price. Uh, basically, they're they're the ones that drive it, and then we have some great committees. We've a, we've a very strong executive, 15 people on our executive, uh, great passion. Uh, all all uh, GA mad people and uh, it's just uh, the amount of work that some of these folks do is just you, you can't put you can't put into words uh, some, some of these folks are putting 20 30 hours a week into this uh, club and uh, you know we, we, we maintain these fields ourselves uh, it's all it's all volunteerism it's uh, it's just great great to see it but it's uh, look at it it starts with the, the, the our former chairman just drive it on and they put great people around them and great people have, you know we've, we've got great people from the start so just to keep it going you know do you have anything else that you wanted to, to add to, get, to, to no, anyone look, anyone to uh no look it's just again it's development if you know if to get the, if anyone that's listening that's in queens or long island or new york get the word out there we're open for everybody it's open we're open for businesses to say we want as many uh, boys and girls playing this game as possible that's 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 all, that's all we want that's our bottom line it's nothing else you know Perfect. Thanks very much, Thanks. Ravi. Appreciate Thank it. Thanks, what was your own role with the uh, the, the development here? Uh, well, I'm a past chairman. That's five years ago, I suppose. Um, but it had, the development had started before that. And when I what I mean by that is the um, you know the, the meetings and the planning um, and all the behind the scenes work, I suppose you could call it. Uh, and that had started, and then it was just kind of take it from there and work with various council members and try and start out funding and. Talk to Ireland and uh, Liam O'Neill and Parik Duffy, you know, we can't say enough about them and, and the time they've put in. And I suppose really without them and the Department of Foreign Affairs it wouldn't have happened. 
Robbie, you just touched on them. Could you could just go into that a bit more and how, how helpful they, they all were to get, get, getting this over the line? Yeah, well, I mean, they, they were completely behind the project. Um, Liam O'Neill came here in the middle of the night. I think he was at an inner dance above in Buffalo. Um, it was around the middle of January. He landed at GFK. He was picked up. He was brought out here. He looked at it, but it was the middle of the night. He could have been looking at the field in Kerry or Cork. Um, but he went back, and I think he spoke to Parik Duffy. And then Parik got involved, and from there it just went that they wanted to be part of the development. And then Jimmy Deenan, a Kerry man, was Minister for the Diaspora. He got involved uh, with the Department of Foreign Affairs. And I suppose at the end of the day we got 750,000, I'm not sure if it was euros or dollars, but it was an awful lot of money um, that enabled us to, to, to move the project uh, along on field two, which is the smaller field, but that got us started. Tell me, how long have you been out? In, are you living in Queens or how long have you been in New York? I'm here, I'm here almost 30 years, about 28 years. I lived in Queens uh, until 2000 and now I live in Long Island, but I'm right on the border, uh, Floral Park and Queens. So I'm about 15 or 16 minutes from here. So I'm probably one of the closest travel-wise. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it's all the same community. There's kids from Floral Park playing, my fellow players, uh, Brendan Ferguson from Floral Park players. So I mean, there's, look, there's, there's fellas willing to play football and girls willing to play football everywhere. We just got to find them. That's what I wanted to touch on. Um, your son, of course, plays the junior team. He, uh, how satisfactory is it to see this get over the line today and seeing your son playing here throughout the years and then coming up tr through, the, uh, through the underage and now being playing uh, at an adult level with, the, with your club here? Yeah, well, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, um, you know, that's why we put in the time we put in and, and, and the meetings and I suppose the rows and the fights and the arguments. That's all part of the GA. I don't know if it's part of Irish or Irishness. Um, but it all comes together then when you see a day like today. And yeah, Sinan plays, he enjoys playing it. Um, he's down in Scranton, he started in Scranton, uh, Pennsylvania this year. But he came back for all our games that he could. He's back this weekend for this match uh, tomorrow. So, I mean, the satisfaction of seeing him play, um, you know, uh, getting him, he, he played Fela, he played from when he was eight years of age, he's 18 now. Um, he's gone basically to the senior ranks and he enjoys it. And I think if you enjoy it, you'll get good at it and, and hopefully he'll play for as long as he can play. Yeah, there's an underage team um, game going on behind us here, and of course, uh, your son has played throughout the underage, and he's up at senior level now. And uh, talking to a lot of them last week after the final, talking to a lot of the Barnabas guys, it's uh, it's quite telling and striking how they're all so passionate about the GA, even though they haven't experienced it at home. Can you, can you talk to that a small bit? Yeah, well, I think it's 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 a direct connection for us because you know we're born in Ireland, uh, we come out here, we immigrate here for different reasons. But I suppose it's the, it's the most Irishness we can bring to them is get them to play the games, and they do have a huge passion for it. And and that Junior B final that was on there two or three weeks ago, uh, Rangers won it. They were the better team, fair play to them. But an awful lot of them players would would all be intertwined. They all know each other. We all know each other. Uh, a lot of that Rangers team are uh, played on a failure that we won in Ireland four years ago. Sinan played, um, and there's a whole lot of other kids from Queens were on that failure team. And that's that's you know. It's very hard to describe what that does to the kids, but it gives them a focus. We took them back then, two years after that, um, for development training. They were in Kerry, they were in Sligo, they were in Wexford. And, and I suppose the most striking thing is that we have so many friends at home, and what I mean by that is the Americans have so many friends in Ireland, not just me or any particular individual, but all the county boards we've gone to have opened us with open arms. Uh, we were in the Centre of Excellence in Kerry, uh, Mickey Ned O'Sullivan was over there, Donny Buckley was there. They couldn't do enough for us. Uh, Tim Murphy had it set up with Donald Daly uh, and then we went up to Sligo for a, a, a blitz up there. Um, so I think that's all part of it. I mean, um, I think that there's a massive opportunity here for the game to be developed, but we have to develop it in the American market. And what I mean by that is the schools, uh, the communities, the American communities. We can't say that it has to be Woodside and Maspeth and, and, and McLean Avenue anymore. I think we have to go out into the bigger um, bigger world, if you want to call it that, because that's where the kids are. Um, immigration from Ireland, I don't know if it's ever going to come back with this COVID, with uh, issues with visas. I think we're going to be very limited to immigration at underage level, at, at senior level, and that's going to affect it at underage level. So I think to grow it, we have to. But hopefully, the, the kids that are playing football now will be able to grow it because they'll eventually they'll be married and have kids and hopefully they'll be able to bring their kids into the football, boys and girls, and bring kids in from school. 
the parish component is so important at home, playing with your local t t town, playing with your your your, your club, uh, your parents are involved. It's been different here in New York throughout the last couple of decades, where at senior level you might be ch it's the county setup. And how important is it today now to have like it, this is a Queens team now, and it, it will be you will be drawing players from Queens, and there there probably be a legacy here, a sustainability that probably hasn't been here in previous years. I would look to, look to the, the Rocklands and the Barnabas. Is that the way forward? Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm not sure that it's it's sustainable for the senior teams that don't have feeder teams or underage teams coming up. I mean, I think that's probably evident in Barnabas won the championship last year and Barnabas won the championship this year. Basically, all uh, American-born kids and fair play to them. They're doing they're doing the right thing. They're putting in the time. There's there's numerous teams coming out of Barnabas, underage to senior, and I think that's the only way. Rangers are doing the same. They won the junior B. They're going to have to push that team up to junior A. Another team is going to have to go up to intermediate. Um, Barnab uh, Rangers could end up having four teams next year. Um, and Shannon Gales is the same. We have to do the same thing. We have to keep getting kids in. Um, and those kids, in my mind, are Shannon Gales for life. And, uh, I can't see them transferring to any other clubs in New York. Maybe they transfer if they, you know, move out of out of New York to Boston or something like that or end up going back to Ireland. Um, but, I mean, I think it's the same at home. Very few kids transfer at home to neighbouring clubs. Um, it's mainly if they move to Dublin or Cork or something like that or for work. And I think it's going to be the same here. We're, we have to base what we do here on what has been done previously in Ireland. I mean, that's, that's a proven model. Um, for getting kids to play football right from when they're seven or eight years of age. A lot of them play football all their lives, boys and girls, and then they get involved in the management side of it or in the, uh, you know, on, in the running of the clubs. And I think we have to base that model, and I think we are doing that now in New York. I think that um, the sustainability of senior football here without feeder teams, uh, I'm not sure how much further we can go with that. Yeah. And do you think, in general, New York GA is on, a, on an upward trajectory? Yeah, I mean, I think it is, but I think that, um, you know, like everything, we, we, we have issues. We have we've an awful lot of drafted players that creates a lot of problems in the schedule, um, trying to get them to play. Um, availability in Gaelic Park is limited. You're trying to run off. I, 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 Joan told me one time, is it like 300 games in, in a very short space of time? This facility here will help with that now. Um, Rockland have their own facilities. I mean, the more facilities we have, the more games we can play outside of Gaelic Park that will help the schedule and, uh, you know, we got to the junior final this year, Rangers got to the junior final, but it was played very late in the year where our kids are in college trying to bring them back. So if we can alleviate that, maybe get them finished earlier, that'll help get them get more competitive games. But I mean, I think the New York is healthy. I mean, there's a lot of people putting in a lot of time. Um, field availability is definitely a problem, but hopefully we can resolve that. Is this a template for perhaps the county board to maybe uh, source somewhere, some public space, maybe Randall's Island, somewhere like that, where you had, where you were, you'd increase availability for the, the senior ranks? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think we have to we have to keep looking for fields because Gaelic Park is very limited. There's a whole lot of other sports involved up there with Manhattan College. So we can only get it when it's available. Um, and we appreciate getting it. Nobody is saying we don't. But yeah, I think definitely if we had a field that we could call our own at the senior level, that would definitely help for training because next January, February, March, you're going to be starting with development squads for Fela boys, Fela girls, New York development squads. Um, there's possibly the Talton Cup. There's possibly uh, the World Games are going to be coming up. So like we, we have to train to get good at what we do. And the season is over now. We may not be playing football again until next February or March, um, or March or April. And we have to, we have to bridge that gap somehow. And that's almost all for this week. Let us know what you think by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Long Haul Podcast. Please like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast. This will ensure that we can get more episodes to you more often. You can check out all of our previous podcasts on thelonghaulpodcast.com where we have tons of post-match interviews and reports on all of this year's New York GA finals. You can also find more Irish American sports stories and other news items on the site. On next week's show, Raymond Byrne from the Hardway home team returns to look back on his attempt to row across the Atlantic last summer. Subscribe to the Long Haul Podcast to make sure you are notified when that episode is released. Finally, I will leave you with some words from Vice Consul General of New York, Dermot Fitzpatrick, who also spoke at the opening ceremony. The work that clubs such as Shannon Gales uh, do to bring community together is, is so important, not just for, for Ireland, but for the community here. 
Uh, it's it's maintaining and building on, on Irish culture. It's keeping Irish sports and Irish heritage alive in New York. And that is critical to strengthening the links between the US and Ireland. The work and effort given by the committee here, volunteers, coaches and supporters ensures that the next generation will keep these traditions alive. And I'd like to thank everyone here for your dedication and commitment to, to Shannon Gales. Equally important, the encouragement of young people of all ethnic and cultural backgrounds, in particular to take part in Gaelic sports and learn about the heritage of the sport while learning the values of teamwork benefits not only them, but this community as a whole. And they will become part of the affinity diaspora. They will associate the best values of the GAA, inclusiveness, volunteerism and respect with Ireland and with Irish values. My dear Annie, oh you New York girls, can you dance the polka? And when we got to Bleecker Street, we stopped at 44. Our mother and her sisters there to meet her at the door to me away. You Santi, my dear Annie, oh you New York girls, can you dance the